Hey guys, it's John from Album Review TV. It's time for a review of Broken Bell's second LP titled After the Disco, due out February 4th on Columbia Records. The duo is comprised of Danger Mouse, aka his real name, Brian Burton, a legendary producer and definitely my favorite producer of the 21st century, working with bands like Portugal the Man, the Black Keys, and even Beck. He's definitely helped refine a lot of band's sounds, and the other half of the duo is James Mercer. You might know him as the lead singer of The Shins, after the disco is due out February 4th. It's been almost four years since we went on a full-length journey with Broken Bells. I found myself just kind of wondering what actually happened to this group. What's changed in the time in between records? Yes, there was the Maryland Fields EP, but I wasn't really huge on that, and it wasn't a full length, and I didn't know if they would actually come back and do a full length again. Uh, you know, Danger Mouse kind of has a reputation for starting side projects and then not really continuing with them. Take Gnarls Barkley, for example. So what's changed? Well, on paper, not a whole lot. Mercer has been busy with his band, The Shins. Of course, Burton has been producing for a ton of bands. Most recently, that really stood out to me, Portugal the Man's Evil Friends. It was my favorite album of 2013, if you saw my top albums of the year list. His production with that group was just incredible. But coming back together, what has changed? I would say not a whole lot. They definitely still have their chemistry that they had on the first self-titled record. It kind of feels like an amped up version of that first self-titled album. Albeit more mature, you can't help but love the fact that the band has not strayed too far away from their roots like so many bands tend to do. But at the same time, they also haven't mixed too much up or added too much new to the formula, which coming from Danger Mouse is something that I would kind of hope for and kind of expect just because he works with such such a wide range of artists and produces for so many that I thought that maybe a different kind of sound would creep their way into this music. But that wasn't necessarily the case, but I think this record is definitely on par with their debut record, if not slightly better. Now when I compare it to the first record, I think that this one definitely has more of a uh, dance rock, if you will, or even disco rock, hence the title of the album, feel to it throughout but overall it still holds a lot of its space rock and indie rock roots throughout this album. So tried and true, there are new things, there's bigger hooks, they did a good job of making things catchier and more accessible this time around. It's just a more mature and more progressed them than 2010. A huge thing that really stood out to me on this record, like I was talking about, is the catchiness of some of these songs. Not as if they're desperately trying to write a catchy hook, it's just something that flowed into this batch of songs in a good way. I felt like many of these songs are more memorable than the ones on the first record, at least in the long run overall. You know, I think that I would be listening to more of these tracks than I am still from their 2010 self-titled record. The opener, A Perfect World, is a great example of that. It's the first thing that comes to mind for me, along with tracks like After the Disco, the title track, and the song Control. A Perfect World is easily one of my favorite tracks on this album. It might have that six minute runtime to it, but it has the perfect balance of light and solid vocals bass, which is something very important, and synth throughout this track. And it hits me as kind of a captivating track that really shows what this duo is about and what they can do. The guitar is light in the track, but it definitely feels right for the mood that this song is going for. Lyrically, the album sees the duo kind of wandering through life, sort of pondering their own thoughts, like kind of through the music, which is what good music is. You know, it's not trying to be something you're not, it's actually just dealing with day-to-day -day topics, things that are on your mind. And they kind of explore whatever comes to mind, such as life, love, and obstacles, just overcoming and dealing with them. After the Disco is an earwormy track in the sense that I find myself humming it throughout the day, possibly even singing the chorus of the track to myself kind of quietly, and I'll be like, what am I doing? The synths and bass on the track are perfectly balanced here, something that's really important to me when you can actually hear the bass in the song, you can actually hear the consistent bass line instead of just being buried under a barrage of other sounds. Lazy Wonderland is a cool change in pace, kind of in the middle towards, I guess, closer to the end of the record. It's got a choppier musical tone to it, and I like the lyrical themes that are dealt with here. The single, Holding On For Life, is another one of my favorites. It's grown on me so much since my initial first listen. It didn't jump out to me at first. It took a few listens, but after that, I was definitely addicted. It's not only become my favorite song on this record, but definitely one of my favorite by the duo to date. The use of guitar feels light and spacey per usual. 
but the keys and the bass echoing in the background throughout this track just kind of sail over the eardrum like syrup spreading over a waffle. Juicy and delectable. Lyrically, I've fallen for its charms as well. What a lovely day to be lonely. Leave It Alone sets a slower and more atmospheric tone, but does so with grace and catchiness once again. The vocals are more in focus and more at the forefront on this track, something I thought that was cool that mixed things up once again, kept the album from getting stale, with vocals that kind of warn against someone who just simply could not leave something alone. The Angel and the Fool is the final song that I want to discuss as it's turned into one of my favorites on this record. You might not see it. If you've listened to this record, you might not think, oh, that's probably one of his favorite songs, but it's one that stuck with me just because of the fact that it's a little bit darker, it's a little bit edgier, and for that reason, it stood out to me and was memorable. Overall, I really don't have a ton of negative things to say about this record. Really, there's not much at all other than the fact that Many of the songs sound similar in style, uh, similar instruments, uh, similar feel, kind of a spacey rock feel. I, I would say it has a moderate replay factor to it and I am enjoying a lot of these tracks. It's a 4 out of 5 for me. What did you guys think of Broken Bell's new LP, After the Disco? Let me know in the comments section down below what you thought, maybe your overall rating, what you would give it, and of course let me know what I need to review next. I'm going to probably do another Throwback Thursday next week just for the fact that there's not a ton of albums coming out right now. Thanks for hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and I will see you very soon right here on Album Review TV, Beyond the Reviews.